If you got your Bible, turn with us today and uh, we'll look at the book of Joshua chapter 2 and uh, verse number 9 I think it is and then we'll go over to chapter 9. And this is found in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 9. The Bible says this. And she said to the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Now what about that? She said, I know that the Lord's given you the land and that your turret is fallen upon us and that all of our inhabitants of the land faint because of you. wonder why. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. And when you came out of, the, out of Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our heart did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and the earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my, unto my father's house and give me a t- true token that ye will save alive my father and my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our lives for your lives, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that he, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Father, it's a blessing. To be here today, we just want to thank you for the good grace of God. We thank of your love. We thank you because of all the good things you've done, all the prayers you've answered. We know that you are a God that really cares, that hears your people and answers prayer. We love you today. Give liberty to your servant and help me to glorify your name. And I'll praise you for it in Jesus' sweet name. In the book of Joshua chapter 9, let me take the time to read it. This is the Hivites. And they come to meet Joshua and the elders of Israel. And they pretend like they're from a far country. They've let the bread get moldy, let the sacks get looking old. So they act like they're just just a little ways from them. But they're acting like, and they lied to them. You know, there's a lot of people that lie, don't they? A lot of people lie this day and time. My daddy used to say, they'll climb a tree and tell you a lie that can stand on the ground and tell you the truth. And that's right, isn't it? This is verse number nine. This is Joshua 9, 9. And they said unto him from a far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God, for we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. Yeah, what about that? And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon and king of Heshbon and to Og, king of Bashan, which was of Asteroth. Father, again, we thank you for the word of God. Help us, we pray. We'll praise you for it. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you today on hearing. Hearing is so important. The Bible talks about being dull of hearing. A lot of people are dull of hearing. A lot of people can't hear. Then a lot of people, when they hear, they refuse to do anything about it. And that's a sad thing. People sometimes don't believe what they hear. And that's a sad thing. And, uh, you know, they said, well, we know the Lord's, with you and the Lord has done these great things and boy we put a fear in their heart and so they've heard these things and they heard a lot of things well that's what I want to preach to you today and talk to you about the importance of believing and the importance of faith okay let's uh, jump in right here and say what had they heard anyway well they told a few things there what they'd heard but then you know what they had heard they'd heard about the creation they'd heard there's a God who created the heavens and the earth He created the moon and the sun and the stars and he created man. He created Adam and Eve. He didn't create two men. He created a male and a female that they would reproduce, that they would enjoy each other's company and they would be God-fearing people. Hey, we've got a long way off the track today, haven't we? These people, they, they magnify this thing of homosexuality. And what they're doing, they're playing with fire, don't even realize it. They're playing with the fire from heaven and God one day is going to strike them down. And that's a sad thing. And so, hey, they'd heard about God's creation. In fact, every culture almost has a story about the creation. 
Why? Because they've heard about it. Hey, you pass it on, you pass the truth on. When you got the truth, you pass it on. You don't keep it, you pass it on. You don't be a dead sea. You give it out, you give it out, you give it out. You give out the word of God. You give out a witness for Jesus Christ. And what they'd heard was about God's creation. Number two, they'd heard about God destroying the world by a flood. They'd heard about the story of Noah and his ark and all that. Because every culture, again, has a story of a flood. You know why they'd heard about it? And they pass it on. Every generation has heard about the ark and the flood. Hey, hey. And so I know that's a good thing to hear, right? And then, of course, they heard about God sending fire down from on Sodom and Gomorrah. God rained fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't rain hell. He didn't rain water. He didn't rain anything else. He rained fire and brimstone. Can you imagine fire and brimstone coming out of heaven? Hey, hey, God rained it down out of heaven because of their wickedness, because of their sex perversion, because they said it's okay to commit all these sex sins. And God said it's wickedness, it's an abomination. I can't put up with it no more. And God expressed his mind when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. They heard about that story. They'd heard about it. Hey, hey, they heard. And then what about they evidently had heard about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? They, you say, well, you reckon they heard about that? Sure, they heard about that. They heard about God giving Abraham this land, about God passing on to Isaac and God passing on to Jacob. And then, of course, God passing on to the Jewish seed. And then, you know what? It's the land of Jesus Christ. In the book of Galatians, he talks about the seed, that God gave it to his seed. And he said, that seed is none other but the Lord Jesus Christ. One day he's coming to reign for a thousand years from Jerusalem. He's going to claim that land. He's going to reign from sea to sea. And they're going to have that land from the river Euphrates all the way to the river of Egypt. You know why? Because it's his land. Hey, the Arabs can't claim that land because he gave it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and he gave it to Jesus because he is his seed. What about that? Isn't that something? Yes, sirree. And of course, they must have heard about old Moses meeting God at the burning bush. How God appeared to Moses. Moses said, hey, there's a bush over there on fire. I guess the lightning's hit it. And he kept watching that kept bush kept burning. Hey, he said that bush ought to burn up. But it kept a burning and kept a burning and kept a burning. Hey, you know, that's the way God, he never ceases to burn, brother. He's the light of this world. Thank God he's a burning reality. And, of course, some people say that's a type of Israel. It's a type of the church. Hey, it's a type of God Almighty, isn't it? Somebody says, well, how's it keep on going? How's the sun keep on going? One day the sun's going dead. Hey, God can make it go as long as he wants it to go. It's amazing. You know, we went to Tennessee just a week or so ago, and we passed over Pigeon River. If you go through the gorge, you pass over two or three different times, maybe four, I hadn't counted. You know what? That runs out of the mountains way back there in uh, the National Forest. Run right down through Canton. Run pretty close to where I lived. Hey, we used to go swim in the Pigeon River. You know what? It's still running. <laughs> My grandpa said, I remember when they it froze. They talk about global warming. Well, I guess they've warmed it up a little bit. He said, I remember when they used to, the Pigeon River froze over, and they'd uh, take a sawmill engine to cross with the oxen on the ice. That was pretty cold, wasn't it? Hey, when God turns the temperature down, it gets cold. I remember when it stayed below 32 for several weeks up in the mountains. I don't know how cold it got down here. Y'all about 6 to 10 degrees warmer than they are up there. But anyway, it stayed below 32 degrees for a week or so. Every day, below 32 degrees. Never got above 32. You know what that does? That puts a frost line. It keeps going down, down. People's pipes begin to freeze. Never had frost before. Why? Because God kept the temperature under 32. Hey, he can turn it down or he can t turn it up. Either one he wants to. Hey, they can't control the weather. He does. Amen. They heard, they heard, they heard, they heard. Then, and then not only so, they heard about the Israelites. Said, hey, Moses, I mean, Pharaoh. Moses said to Pharaoh, let God's people go. We need to go. We need to get out of here and go worship God. Well, who's the Lord that I should obey him? 
I'll tell you, he's your creator. He's your maker. He's the one that gives you breath. He's the one that gives you life. He's the one that gives you the food you eat, the water you drink, the clothes you put on, the car you drive, the job you work on, the house you live in. That's God Almighty that gave you that. That's who he is. He's the Almighty God. He said, I ain't going to let you go. And God sent ten plagues. Ten plagues. I mean, it was just about, Egypt was just about destroyed. I mean, everything, boy, was down to nothing. And finally, God said, I'm going to kill the firstborn of all these, even the animals, the firstborn of the animals. The firstborn of Pharaoh died. And they were willing to get rid of them, get them out of there. And they said, get out of here, get out of here. And so, praise God, they left. So they had heard about the exodus. They had heard about them coming to the Red Sea. And here comes Pharaoh, he changes his mind. He said, no, I got to get them back. We, got, we need them slaves. We need the work they're doing for us. We need them. Go get them. Go get them. Go get them. Bring them back. And the children of Israel, they begun to, begin to murmur. That's just a bunch of Baptists for sure. Eh? Begin to murmur and complain, belly ache. They said, Moses should have left us down there. Here comes Pharaoh. He's going to kill us. Moses went to God, and God said, stand still, Moses, and see the salvation of God. He said, Moses, take that rod you got in your hand, stretch it out. And God just blew his nose. The Bible said, by the breath of his nostrils. Hey, what is that? That's your breath, ain't it? He said, by the breath of his nostrils, he blew out a space big enough for three million Jews to go through in one night's time. And you know what he did? He froze the depths. The Bible said he congealed the depths. That word congeal means to freeze. God froze the depths so it wouldn't be muddy, so they could go right on a cross with no problem. And here they are. They march on a cross. This is what they'd heard now. They said, we've heard. And then, of course, God said to Moses, oh, Pharaoh and his arm, is it coming? Is it coming and they're coming? Boy, they thought we're going to catch them now. Can you imagine them riding through that sea, the water standing up on both sides? Can you imagine what they thought? And they thought they're going to catch them and bring them back. He said, stretch that rod out. And God let the waters come back. And all of them were drowned in the Red Sea. God said, you're not going to see them anymore. <laughs> hey, God's on the throne, folks. We've heard about him. We've heard about him. We've heard about the cloud he gave you. He said, a cloudy pillar by day and a pillar of fire by night. You know what God did? He gave them shade in the daytime. <laughs> you know what that cloud did? It identified them. It identified the God of heaven too. It said God is with the Jewish people. God is with Israel. He was standing up over them. And the Bible said it was a pillar of fire by night. Can you imagine having street lights out there in the desert? Can you imagine, blessed be God, heat in the desert, it gets real cold. And God was giving them heat and giving them light. And they'd heard about all that. They'd never seen nothing like that. Hey, have you ever heard anything like that? Have you ever seen anything like that? No, sirree. And so, brother, I mean, they said, we've heard about all this. And then, of course, they heard about, no doubt, God coming down on Mount Sinai. That old big mountain, Mount Sinai, the God of heaven came down. The Bible said it was in altogether a smoke. And the Bible said the the, light, the thunder was rolling and the lightning was flashing. And he said uh, there was a trumpet begin to blow and the old mountain began to tremble. That old mountain began to dance around because God sent an earthquake. And then the Bible says there was a great wind, a great tempest, all this taking place. And the people of Israel standing there scared to death, even old Moses scared to death. His knees are knocking together. There was a God who came down to show how big he was. And you know what happened? That trumpet kept, kept getting louder and louder. And finally, evidently, it stopped. And God spoke out of the midst of the fire and gave the Ten Commandments audibly. They said, we have heard God speak to men. And they lived to tell it. Because, you know, the heathen said, believe, if a God appeared to you like that, you're going to die. Hey, this is a God that talks to you and you live, praise God. He don't want you to die. He wants you to live. He wants you to live. That's what he wants you to do. 
He still wants you to live, right? Oh, yes, sirree. And so they heard about that God fed them with the manna from heaven. Hey, that's a something, isn't it? God fed them with the manna from heaven. Forty years he fed them. Sometimes we worry about what we going, how we're going to make it, what we're going to do. And I've told you before, you know, that, uh, when not this having all this shortage and you go, everybody had snatched up everything, all the toilet paper, all the paper towels and everything like that. And so the Lord put one, there's one left. <laughs> I was able to get it. The other day, the same thing. There was one left and I was able to get it. That's what God said, I want to supply your need. He didn't say, I'll supply your wants. Right. I'll supply your needs. Hey, God, hey, he keeps his word, folks. He keeps his word. And you can believe on that. God fed them 40 years. The Bible said he fed them bread from heaven, angels' food. What do you think about that? And then you know what? God gave them water out of the rock. They didn't have no water through that awful, that terrible wilderness, that great and terrible wilderness, which no man passed through the land of death with their serpents and all that lo- and scorpions and all that. That terrible wilderness. Four, three million Jews out there in that wilderness. And God gave them water out of the rock. And you know what? Not only so, but you know they, got it, they needed it the second time. And I told you that last week, I think, old Moses hit the rock when he was supposed to speak the rock and got himself knocked out going to the promised land. But you know what happened? There was a river followed them through the wilderness. That river followed them through the wilderness. Ain't that amazing? That second time, that water followed them through the wilderness. You say, I ain't never read that. Well, you ain't never read the Bible. <laughs> it's in there. Just read it. Amen. Just read it. That's what you get out of reading the Bible. Well, she said, we've heard all that. We've heard how God did all that thing. Maybe they'd heard about it. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. And of course, they'd heard about all the things that happened through the wilderness. And We've heard about how you destroyed them two mighty kings. Og and Sihon, king of the Amorites. Powerful kings, great kings, mighty kings. And they destroyed them. You must remember they'd been servants. They'd been peasants for all them years down in Egypt. They wasn't fighting men. They wasn't soldiers and all that. And yet they were able to whip the britches off of them. You know why? God was with them. God fought for them. God will fight for you too, brother. And he'll deliver because he's a God that delivers. Yes, sirree. Well, later on they must have heard about how they crossed the Jordan River. You know how many times God opened the water and let them through? He opened the Red Sea and let them through. He opened the Jordan and let them through. And then you know what? He opened the river for Elijah and let him cross over. <laughs> and you know, oh, Elijah too, I suppose, because he got that mantle. He hit and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And the waters parted hither and thither. Four times God opened the, the rivers and the waters let them through. Can God do today what he done yesterday? Can God do for Zion what he did for Israel yesterday? Hey, hey, he can. God can. Well, I wanna, you know, they must have heard later on, I'm not talking about uh, Rahab, I'm not talking about the Hivites, but I'm talking about people later. They must have heard about Joshua. They must have heard about David. They must have heard about Samson, they must have heard about Jonah and all that, how God did great and mighty things through these men. But then number two, I want to say, what have you heard? What have you heard? That's some of the things they heard. But what have you heard? Well, I'll tell you some of the things they're teaching today that God is a myth. You know what they're teaching young people today in these colleges and a lot of these schools, that God is nothing but a myth. Hey, when you meet him at the judgment, you're going to know there's an almighty God. That's what you're going to do. The Bible's not dependable. Brother, you can depend on this Bible more than you can depend on grandpa and grandma and daddy and mama and the president and anybody else. You can depend on this blessed book. You're a fool if you don't. You're a fool if you don't believe this Bible. That's what Jesus said. 
Hey, they're teaching that Jesus was just a prophet, nothing more than a prophet. He was just a prophet like any other prophet. That's what a Jewish lady told me many years ago. The first Jewish lady I ever talked to that I remember talking to, she said, oh, Jesus was a prophet out there and we just like starved himself to death. That was her interpretation of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, he's the son of God. Amen. Yes, he is. But that's what they're teaching today, and that's what they're saying today. I'm talking about what have they heard? What are they hearing today? Well, they're hearing that he wasn't the son of God, that he didn't fulfill Isaiah 53. You know, the rabbis, they don't, they want, they don't want you to read Isaiah 53. Stay away from that Isaiah 53, boy. Hey, because that's talking about the suffering Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They don't want you to read that. They don't want you to believe that. But aren't you glad that's who it's talking about? Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given. Yes, sir. He's the Son of God. Uh, that uh, his death was no more than any other man's. They said the death of Christ, he's just another man. He's just, his death is no more than any other man's. You think that's true? That he did not rise from the dead. You know, that, that lie has been perpetuated among the Jewish people. In the book of Matthew, he said that lie has been perpetuated. He didn't rise from the dead. They stole his body away. Hey, hey, hey. Boy, that devil's got all kind of lies. Have you heard what them, them Russians telling their people? Them lies they're telling them? You know, the whole system is built on a lie. The whole communist system is built on a dirty devil lie. And one day, them people going to wake up in the lake of fire out yonder and out of darkness. Hey, that's what the Bible said. All liars have their part in the lake of fire. And so they better wake up. And they don't believe he's coming again. They don't believe he's coming again. They don't believe that America. They, they believe America. They've been taught America's evil. They've been taught that uh, we're racist. Hey, there's always a bad apple in every pile about it, ain't there? Whether it's black, white, red, yellow, brown, it don't make no difference. There's a, there's a rotten apple in every bunch. And if you take a rotten apple and magnify it, what about that whole bush over here? It's good. You take one rotten apple and say, boy, that's all. And look, you just magnify that one. What about them good and throw that rotten one away? And that's what they're doing. They're taking that rotten apple. Look here, look here, look here, look here. No, don't look at that. Look at them good ones. Look at them good apples in there. Amen. Y'all still out there? Say Amen. They're saying our Constitution ought to be done away with. It was written by a bunch of old white-headed white men. Hey, brother, they're godly men. Right. They was godly men. Yeah. They yeah. wasn't this. They were godly men, men that believed this Bible, men that taught this Bible, men that were tracts that believed in the living God, and they based yeah. our Constitution upon the blessed Word of God. They won't listen to anything that's true. Miss. Alexander Cortez, you know, has had a big, big mouth of running wide open ever since she's been in there teaching this all this left stuff, this Marxism. She's for the big green deal and all that baloney. She would not take America's godly heritage as we sent it to her. She sent it back unopened. How can you ever know anything if you don't hear the truth? You'll believe the devil's lie. You'll buy the devil's lie. You'll ride the devil's lie into hell. That's what you'll do. Yeah, they want to get rid of it. America needs to change. They're taking down the statues. They're changing the names of streets and changing the names of universities and colleges. and change. They want to change everything because they want to make you a communist land. And what you got when you get it? You got a Russia. You got a China. You got a North Korea. You got a Venezuela. You got a Cuba. That's what you got when you throw the Constitution away. We can't let it ever happen. Saints, we got to pray against that crowd. That's what Elijah did. He prayed against Israel and their wickedness and their sin. And we got to pray against that crowd that God will defeat them. He'll take them down. He won't let their plans materialize and have any kind of victory at all. We got to pray. That's what they're hearing today. That's what they're hearing today. They sure have been deceived. They've been duped. They've been woefully led the wrong way. They've been given a death blow. That's what they've been given. Can I preach a little longer? 
Number three, what I've heard and know. <laughs> what I've heard and what I know. The Bible is God's eternal book. It is the inspired, inerrant, infallible, indestructible word of the living God. I know it's true. I know that God is my creator, my maker. You know that too, right? That we are moral beings. You know, I watch them little old squirrels and birds and all that stuff coming around. They're not moral beings. They don't have accountability to God. They don't even know God as far as knowing Him. God put an instinct in. They do everything God made them to do. Just like you make a little, you know, something to hop around. You wind it up and it hops around. Don't know anything. Don't know where it's going. Nothing. The animals, they do exactly what God told them to. Now, they're smart. Hey, I was telling Karen, look at that little old head on them birds, how smart they are. They got navigation. They got eyes that can see. Just a little old piece of bread on the ground, little old grain. I mean, imagine that little, people talk about bird brain. Man, they're smart. I mean, some of them fly all the way to South America. And they fly back in the spring, and they come right back, and robins come right back to our yard. Ain't that amazing? Could you do that? You're not that smart. No siree, but I'll tell you, God's made them, but they're not moral beings. A moral being, he has the power to make choices and choose your will and give an account your will. We are responsible to the living God. One day we'll have to give an account of the life that we've lived and what we've done with Jesus Christ. And so you are a moral being and having moral accountability. Hey, hey, you know anything about that? Have you heard anything about that? That Jesus Christ is Holy Ghost conceived, virgin born. He lived a sinless life. He died a substitutionary death. He died not for his own sin or anything he'd done, but he died for you and for me. Hallelujah. I know he's the son of God. How do you know he's a son of God because of the experience I've had with him? But the Holy Ghost of God that lives on the inside. I was telling Carolyn, I watched uh, Forensic Files. Can I run a rabbit right here? And uh, this uh, lady's husband died. He went through some different sickness and they couldn't really find anything much wrong with him. But he died. And then, of course, later on, a year or so later, the son, the older son, he, he died the same way. Well, just a little later, I don't know how much later, but uh, the, the daughter, I reckon she was a teenage daughter, she got sick and they put her in the hospital. She's at the point of death and, and they couldn't figure out what's wrong. But her preacher, the woman's preacher, called the sheriff and said, hey, I want to give you a tip. Look at his wife. Look at the wife. Because Preacher Stanley's preaching on, you know, knowing the difference, something like that this morning. Y'all heard him. Some of you heard him, right? Having discernment. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He gives you discernment. He gives the saints of God discernment. So that's the reason they pick up on things, because they got discernment. Hey, that's what the Holy Ghost does. That's the reason. One reason I know there's a God in heaven. He gives discernment, and you know what people's doing because the Holy Ghost reveals him. Well, he died a substitutionary death for you and me, for everyone that would believe. He rose on the third day. He ascended back into heaven. He sits on the right hand of the throne of God. He's our mediator. but He's the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And when I get in trouble, I run to Jesus. I was listening to that song, I run to the rock. Hey, we got a rock boy we can run to. A, a rock for a shelter in a time of storm. A rock that's a shadow in the weary land. He's a rock, praise God, you can run to. And so he's our mediator. When we sin and we go to him and he'll take our sin to the Father and say, Father, please forgive them. Yes, sir. He sits there on the right hand of the throne of God. You know what he's going to do? He's going to come back. It's getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting close to the coming. 
That old bear's a moving around over there, isn't it? That old bear's a moving. But hey, God's going to bring that old bear down on the land of Israel. He's going to give that bear a burying place on the mountains of Israel. Hey, 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 brother, there's a God in heaven. You better believe it. Oh, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? This is what I've heard. He's coming back in the rapture, and then you know what he laid on? He's coming back after the tribulation. He's going to pour out his judgment upon this world. There's going to be the great tribulation, a time that's never been like it in all of history, never have been a time like it, never will be a time like it. It's going to be the greatest time of judgment that you've ever seen. When you see those stories and those pictures about them people over there in Ukraine, they blowed up everything. There's nothing but rubble around everywhere. People's cold. Boy, we was talking about last night. We, our power was off. What time did it go off, Lemuel? What time was it? Five? Four? 9.30. Came back on 9.30, didn't it? I mean, boy, it was cold. It sure wasn't as cold as it is over there. Them people don't have no heat. Ain't that pitiful? Hey, we ought to thank God for America. Hey, we ought to thank God for the freedom we enjoy. That devil wants to take it away from you. He wants to take this a privilege of coming to the house of God and worshiping away from us. Hey, we can't do it. We can't do it. We can't let him do it. We got to pray night and day and thank God every day for our blessings. Thank God for everything the Lord gives us. We got to thank him every day. He's coming back to reign. He's going to make, he's going to destroy this world. He's going to make a brand new one. He's going to make a brand spanking new one. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, he saves from the mountaintop, from the housetop to the mountaintop to the lowest valley. He saves, Jesus saves. I've heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Yes, sir. There is life and life for him. Okay. Well, I want to ask you number th- four right quick. What have you done about the truth that you've heard? What have you done about what you've heard? People in the United States, can't, they can't claim they hadn't heard. You can't claim to be a heathen in a land of light. This is a land of light. On TV, on radio, on the internet, I mean it's 24-7. How are you going to say that you have never heard anything? Hey, you're going to hear something. Surely to God you hear something. And what are you going to do about that, what you heard well, let me tell you what Rahab did. <laughs> Boy, she, you know, there's two things you can do with it. You can receive it or reject it, right? What you've heard about the Almighty God, about the Word of God, you can either receive it or reject it. Rahab, she received it, didn't she? The Ninevites, they received it. Rahab received it. The Hivites received it. They received it. You know, God went to great lengths to get the gospel to the Ninevites. He called old Jonah and said, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach. Jonah said, nothing doing. He got him a ticket. Lit out across the Mediterranean Sea to go to Spain, I guess. And God said, I ain't going to let you get by that easy. He sent a great storm. Now, this is the way God deals. God, he, he goes all out. He, he expends a lot of time and uh, we call it expense, but not expense to God, but we call it a lot of expense, right? He takes the time to send the wind. And the old ship, boy, I mean, it's a rocking like they've never seen. They're throwing stuff overboard. They're doing everything. And they find old Jonah asleep. Wake up, thou sleeper, care us not that we perish. He gets up there and they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Tell us what you've done to bring all this judgment on us. Well, he told them. And they wanted to I didn't want to throw him overboard. He said, throw me overboard. They didn't want to do that. Them fellas kind, wasn't they? They finally said, okay, Jonah. And they threw him overboard. And you know what God did? He prepared a whale. And that old whale swallowed Jonah, yeah, took him down to the bottom of the ocean. Zoom, right on down to the bottom. You know what Jonah did? He got to praying. Yeah. Brother, you get in trouble, you're going to pray. If you don't pray, there's something bad wrong with you. I remember years ago when I was just a little old boy, I'd get a pain in my side. I'd go to pray, and Lord, I thought I had pain inside us, and I'd go to confess and ever sin I thought I had. I didn't want to go to the hospital and have my appendix taken out. I thought I had it. 
know what? The Lord always heard me. But you know what? He got to praying, and God made that old fish sick. He got sick. Because Jonah got in the right tune, didn't he? That old fish vomit came out on the land. And God gave Jonah a second call. Aren't you glad God is a God of the second chance? Go to Nineveh and preach what I bid you to preach. And imagine how long it took Jonah to get there. It took him a month probably to get to, close to a month maybe. I'm not sure. I didn't take the time to go back and look it up. But it took him several weeks, I imagine, to get to Nineveh. Don't say where the whale vomited him out, but it was somewhere in the Mediterranean. And he had to go a long way off. He didn't make one day trip. I mean, a whole trip of one day. That's the way a lot of preachers preach it. But he entered into Nineveh one day. I believe he's about to back out, don't you? He went into Nineveh a whole day before he started preaching. And I guess he got a hold of him. Boy, you better start preaching. You know, has God ever chastened you? And you'd want to... And you decided you better do what God told you to do. And then, you know what? You just wanted to back out. And then you got to think of what God would do to you. <laughs> so he started preaching. And you know what? He didn't give him an invitation. He had 40 days, and God's going to overthrow this place. There's no record of him giving an invitation. He didn't say, if you repent, God will spare you. He said 40 days and God's going to overthrow this place. I mean, the old king heard that. Everybody heard that. Everybody got down and repented. That's what they did when they heard. What do you do when you hear the word of God? Rahab, when she heard that, she said, we know that he's God for what we've heard. And I want you to save my life and my family. Hey, God cares, don't he? God really cares. You know what? Aren't you glad you got saved? Jack Kyle said the first time he heard man preach on the second coming, he got saved because he thought he was coming that day. Hey, brother, that's the way we ought to feel. He may come today. Wouldn't that be wonderful if he did? Then number two, you know what? You can reject it. You can walk away. You can hear the word of God and there's many people come to church and they walk out unsaved. They walk out rejecting the word of God. God says today is a day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Right now. Give it to God now. Don't put it off another day. Don't say some other time. Don't say tonight. Don't say some other time. It's now. It's now. It's now. Come to Jesus now. But they walk out. I told you about this lady. Who is it? having revival at Good News Baptist Church, the first church I pastored, she was under Holy Ghost conviction. I mean, really, tears running down her face. And she held on that pew. She would not come. I think it's the very next night she came. There was not a lick of conviction on her. Not one doubt. There was not one tear. It was her night to come, but she didn't come. We went one time to visit this. Turned out to be a, uh, no, I'm not sure if it's Mormon. Uh, Which one believes in baptism? Got to be baptized to be saved. That's what there was. But anyway, we got to witness this man. I mean, you could feel the Spirit of God dealing with him, tugging. And I told him, gave him the plan of salvation. His wife said, you've left something out, ain't you? And I said, no. Oh, you got to be baptized. She began to argue, you got to be baptized before you can be saved. Every bit of conviction on that man left. It left. We just got up and left herself because it was no use. Hey, when the Holy Ghost quits dealing, friend, it's too late. What are you going to do with what you've heard? Are you going to receive it or are you going to reject it? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I gave you what the Lord gave me. And I hope you heard, and I hope most of you, I know it. You know everything I've said here today. But there's people out there watching by way of television that don't know. They hadn't heard until today. Maybe they've heard over and over again, never have done anything about it. It's time to do something about your soul salvation. 
It's time to give your heart and life to Christ. It's time to repent. It's time to say, Lord, I surrender all. I give you my heart. I give you my life. It's yours from this time forward. Give it to the Lord. Give it to Jesus. Father, I pray you'd have your way in this invitation. Save every soul that's lost. Bring home the cold, indifferent to backslidden. Be magnified, be glorified. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name.